Okay, next up. Actually, is uh, oh, that's what I was waiting to see. Uh, my uh, old, much older brother, uh, Dr. James Newby, is here, um, and uh, you know we won't we won't talk about that. But anyway, uh, he and, and his wife, Dr. Olivia Newby, are uh, members of their practice, and they will be coming up to talk about diabetes. They have a healthy living center that they have been. Um, promoting and it's all about again this aspect of prevention and that is really the key to all of this is how do we not just diagnose but prevent and how do we deal with those complications so we're hoping that we can detect things early enough we can prevent the complication aspect everybody got that all right now did you enjoy the first talk all right Dr. Dr. Fleming and I are very good friends, so we, we, we talk a lot. Both of our children play together at times. We go, both go to the same church, so we've had the opportunity to get to know each other, both professionally and personally, for a number of years. So I really appreciate him coming out. So without further ado, uh, my uh, brother, Dr. James Newby, his wife, Dr. Olivia Newby, will come up and talk about diabetes. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm going to do like we teachers do in school. Because we, a lot of what we do is visual in our talk, I'm going to need to ask everybody on this side of the room if you please could move over this side of the room so you can see the screens better. You'll appreciate it better. All right, thank you for my indulgence with that. Uh, as my brother said, I'm uh, Dr. James Newby, family uh, practitioner and a certified diabetes educator. My wife, Dr. Olivia Newby, is a family, certified family a nurse practitioner, a doctor of nursing practice, and also a certified uh, diabetic educator. So we're going to kind of go into diabetes, its complications, and what's the outlook on treatment in the 21st century. Now, a little introduction. Everyone's heard of the story of the Wizard of Oz. Uh, Dorothy was given these ruby slippers. Uh, of the kill uh, wicked witch of the east uh, by Glinda the good witch of the north. Now during this story Dorothy was trying to get to the Wizard of Oz uh, so she could find her way back to Kansas. Now when Dorothy finally got to see the wizard you know none of his trickery or foolery and false wizardry could get her back home. Now when Dorothy felt all was lost uh, Glinda the good witch of the north showed up and told her she had to answer all along how to get home. And the power was in her slippers, and all she had to do was click them three times to get home. Now today's lecture will show you that most people with diabetes have ruby slippers, but they just don't know how to use them. <laughs> all right. Okay, now according to the Centers of Disease Control, uh, diabetes, it's 29, about 29 million people with diabetes. It's the seventh leading cause of death in, the, in our country. It's the leading cause of kidney failure, stroke, heart disease, non-accident related lower limb amputations and blindness. Now in Norfolk itself, where we are from, it affects, diabetes affects 10.5% of the population and the rest of the country it affects 9.3. So we actually have more diabetes in Norfolk than many other places in the country. Okay, now from the 2012 statistics of diabetes, African Americans comprise 13.2% of all the diabetes in the United States. Uh, Hispanic population is right behind us at 12.8, Asian 9.0, and white 7.6%. American Indian actually has more diabetes than all at 15.9. Now, in a study by the CDC that went from 20, 2009 to 2012 showed that 37% of adults over age 20 had prediabetes, and, fit, and over 51% of people over age 60 have prediabetes. So that's why there's so much diabetes starting to grow. Next. Now, worldwide with diabetes, it's also found to be really growing. 
In 1995, there were 135 million people with diabetes. In 2000, can't hear well? All right, thank you. In 2000, 171 million people had diabetes. In 2013, 32 million people worldwide had diabetes. And it's predicted at this rate of growth, in 2035, 600 million people will have diabetes. Okay, now 80% of diabetes is being found in what we call developed countries. Countries that, you know, uh, have highways and apartment buildings and things of that nature. And it's also shown that the most people that develop diabetes in those areas are the disadvantaged and, so, and it, both economically and socially. Now there's a worse life expectancy uh, the earlier one develops diabetes. So the earlier you develop diabetes, the risk of more complications and trouble occurs. So what is contributing to this avalanche of worldwide diabetes? They really feel, they see it mostly in what we call urbanization and technology. This leads to a sedentary lifestyle and the sedentary lifestyle leads to people eating more, less active, and gaining weight, and all this leads to the complications in development of diabetes. It's also found that the Western diet, which consists of mostly meat and processed foods, are playing a huge part in the growth of diabetes. So basically what is diabetes? Diabetes simply is a condition where the body does not process food properly for energy. Everything we eat is made for energy, so diabetes is a condition that just doesn't properly process that food. Okay, now there are several types of diabetes. I'm not gonna go into great detail, I'll just give you a little synopsis. Type two diabetes is the most common type of diabetes. About 85% of people have type two diabetes. That's where the body doesn't, the body produces insulin, but the insulin tends to not work properly. It's defective, or the body's resistant to the insulin that's made. That's type two diabetes, the major type. Type one diabetes is where the body makes no insulin at all. So you have to have insulin just to live with that type of diabetes. Gestational diabetes is a type of diabetes that pregnant women get. They become pregnant, they develop diabetes, they deliver the baby, diabetes goes away. And the last type of diabetes is called latent autoimmune. And in a nutshell, what it is, a person who has diabetes has type two diabetes, some changes over the years, the pancreas stops making insulin, and they become a type, essentially a type one. So those are the four types of recognized diabetes. One second, Keith. I'll let it go past here. Okay. So how do we diagnose diabetes? Basically diabetes, well, fasting sugar overnight when you haven't eaten for at least eight hours, if the figure is 126 or higher, that's diagnostic for diabetes. There's a test called an A1C test. If that number is 6.5 or higher, it's a diagnostic for diabetes. Now, pre-diabetes is where you're sort of in between not having diabetes, but don't have all the, all the clues and signs of diabetes. It can lead to a lot of similar problems that having diabetes, but it's not full-blown diabetes yet. So some of the basic symptoms of diabetes are the excess thirst, frequent urination, some weight loss, tiredness, hunger, can be signs of diabetes developing. Now most people though, don't have any signs that they have diabetes, which makes it so difficult sometimes to pick up early or make you think something could be wrong. Just bear with me, this technology has me a little messed up here. Uh, I'm just gonna have to use the screen. This is getting too hard. <laughs> I 
I'm going to just use this screen that I made all y'all move over here for. Okay, so why do we need to diagnose diabetes? Because of the complications. If diabetes caused no problems, really wouldn't worry with it. But because there are so many issues that develop, that's why diabetes is such a thing we have to find out about. Okay, so one of the bigger complications of diabetes is stroke and heart disease. This is a main killer uh, with those that have diabetes. 65% of the cause of death in those with diabetes either comes from heart disease or stroke. Okay, kidney disease. Come here, old man. You just flip it like that. All right, yes, we got it now. Tony got to help him out. <laughs> okay, another complication is kidney disease. Uh, basically, since diabetes affects the blood circulation, that's why it causes so many problems. So what happens with kidney disease, the, the arteries get damaged from diabetes, and thus the kidneys who depend on that blood become damaged. That's why you get heart disease, because the same condition affects the arteries that affect that. So with diabetes, it's the number one cause of people with failed kidneys needing to go on dialysis. And just as a side note, you know what the number two cause of kidney failure is? Hypertension. So you can see if you have both, that can really be a problem. All right. Next complications is what we call basically hardening of the arteries. Since I mentioned arteries is the issue, that's what tends to happen. Diabetes, because of the high insulin load that occurs and some of the resistance, the arteries get damaged and allow plaque buildup to occur. And that eventually leads to circulation trouble that can cause amputations and affect other areas of the body. And in this picture, you may can see, go back, I'm not sure you can see that bottom picture, but that's someone whose circulation is so bad that the toes at the bottom are really dark. I'm not sure you can see it well, but that person more likely is going to lose those limbs. Okay, next area of diabetes affects are the eyes. Uh, called, a condition called diabetic retinopathy is when the vision of the eyes gets affected by diabetes and that's in the one the number one that's actually that's the number one eye disease that diabetes calls and unfortunately in the african-american community about 50 percent of people with diabetes develop this condition uh, moving on the nerve damage to diabetes can cause a condition called diabetic neuropathy that's when it affects those nerve endings that go to your feet mostly. It can affect the hands, but typically in the feet you get these numbing, tingling sensations. They say, they describe as someone, you know, they don't feel like they're walking on their own feet. Um, what this condition can do, it can lead to someone stepping on a tack or get a splinter in their foot, and they don't feel it. And the next thing you know, they get some kind of infection, develop abscesses, and can eventually lead to amputation if the damage is bad enough. Uh, another thing diabetes can do can cause sexual dysfunction, cause erectile dysfunction in men and uh, orgasmic dysfunction in women because it's affecting those blood vessels. They are finding out some of the very first signs of heart disease can actually be erectile dysfunction in men because those blood vessels are getting blocked. And the same thing occurs down there, will occur up in your chest. Oh, technology just messed up again. All right, next, the next condition is, uh, can cause chronic dental disease. It can affect your teeth and cause all kinds of trouble. The dentist has difficulty handling because the sugar levels just affect those areas. All right, now moving on to some personal risk factors that can contribute to developing diabetes. The number one risk factor contributing to diabetes is called central obesity. It's where the stomach area that, has, that gets the largest from fat intake. Um, it's the single highest risk factor. And in men, if the waistline is 40 inches or more, or women 35 inches or more, it really puts you up the ladder in possibly developing diabetes. Next thing is lack of activity. A sedentary lifestyle really increases your risk of developing diabetes. Find that exercise and activity, burn off sugar calories, help to reduce weight, help prevent diabetes. Family history. Tends to run in families. There is a certain amount of predisposition 
if your family has diabetes. I don't know if you can see that picture well up there, but what do you think their risk of developing diabetes is going to be? Very high. Everyone is very overweight in that family. Okay, so what's the solution to controlling diabetes in the 21st century? Is it using more medications? No. Next. Is it having uh, newer and better medications? No. Is it newer technology? No. Is it diet and lifestyle changes? Yes. Oh, y'all are ahead of the curve on me here. All right. Okay, at this, port, at this section, uh, Dr. Livia Newby is going to take over and present a lot of the nutritional aspect. How you all doing? I'm Olivia Newby. I am a family nurse practitioner with a doctorate of nursing practice, certified diabetes educator. Only 4% of us in our African American uh, in the United States. So hey, what am I going to talk about? Food. <laughs> And how do you make this change? How do you make it just part of your everyday um, uh, mantra, plan? Is what do you do? How, how do you fix it? What got me into becoming more focused on dietary? Because I used to send my um, um, patients out to um, various places for diabetes education. And one of the questions I would ask them, um, and they came back just like I sent them. I'm like, something's wrong. What happened? What happened? Um, I said, well, did you tell them you were putting fat back in them collard greens? Uh, uh, did you tell them you were eating some pig feet? Uh, um, did you even tell them about the chitlins you have on the New Year's? No. Did you even discuss what you eat? Uh, no. So once I realized that they were not talking about what they were eating, how could we even approach how to change? How can we even approach for them to be in control of their healthy eating? So uh, the, one of the tools we use, uh, I am very much an uh, advocate for, is portion control. Uh, you just cannot eat out of that 12 and 14 size plate. You need to eat out of that um, plate on the left hand side, not the one on the right hand side. Who is controlling my sides though? You. Oh, okay, so hey there. I'm gonna do the up, so we're not ready for you to go. So let's go back to the very first one, because I jump all over the board from the slides, so they work. Uh, and so the next thing is nutrient knowledge. Uh, we, that's my, um, um, I tell you, my ladies, when you all out shopping and you see this dress in Nordstrom, you got to have. But one of the things we want to do is look at the price tag first, right? That's how you want to do when you go shopping for your food. You want to read that label and you want to look at that price tag. So that's how you, when we go forward, none of my diabetes patients, patients with diabetes, should and should not buy anything without reading that label. And the third thing is a uh, healthy diet. What, and there are a massive number of diets out there, but which one fits you? Which one I like to say is culturally tailored? In May 2016, in the Journal of Nurse Practitioner, which is an evidence-based journal for nurse practitioners, I published an article that was titled Culturally Tailored uh, Type 2 Diabetes for African Americans in Group Visits. And why did I do that? Because I needed to culture your eating habits around what you do, not what I do. Okay? Now, ready? Portion size. We are often going to restaurants and you know when you get a plate and they got a little bit of food on there and you done paid a lot of money, you got issues, right? You want that plate full to the rim, you want every space covered, that is the place, not the plate you want to eat out of. So now we need to change your thinking. Don't always cover the plate. We want small is always better. You know that diamond? 
We want small box. We want healthy yet small. You remember coming up when we had McDonald's? They see that old computer in the back? When McDonald's came about, we only had one size, and now you won't size it up. You won't, they, oh, it's only 50 cents more if I supersize it. But you don't want that anymore, because I always say, you eat it now, you're gonna be visiting me later. Okay, so now let's look at this soda. Uh, well, how many packs of sugar in, in there? I think that says 98, um, 48 teaspoons of sugar, 800 calories, that's eight miles walking and running. Okay, for every 100 calories you need to be moving a mile. Tips to control, nobody eats that big hamburger though, right? Nobody. If you got a friend like that, leave them, leave them. <laughs> Don't hang with them. Because your money will be coming to me in the office. Oh no, to me and Dr. Newby, okay? So when you all eat like that, you're gonna be making more and more appointments, okay? So portion control, smaller plates. Why, and I say don't eat in front of the TV. Why not? Why not eat it, in, I don't want you eating in front of the TV. Cause you just eat and eat and eat. And have we called that in my world, mindless eating. You know, you're really not hungry, but that coworker got a candy bar on her desk, you reach and get one. You know, you walk by, uh, you wasn't even thinking about eating, but your friend or sister eating a bag of chips, you eat it. So it's called mindless eating and not eating just mindlessly. Uh, avoid all the eats, all you can eat buffets. That's a no brainer. You know you gotta get as much as you can for that $20 or $15 you all have paid. You feel like you got to make Golden Corral pay for what you get what you paid for. And you're not gonna waste your money on a salad. You paid $10 and you gonna get meat after meat and meat, right? And that bread, you're gonna get a bread. And some of y'all putting some in your pocketbook, some of you putting it in a napkin, some of y'all doing something else because you all gonna make sure you got your money. Am I right? There you go. So you don't hang with them friends that wanted to go to the buffet at the church now. No. Mm -hmm. Another visit to Dr. Newby and I. Another visit. Okay. Um, next. This is when I teach my diabetes class. Again, I'm gonna promote my center. It's the Healthy Living Center. We teach you how to eat, and I even teach you how to cook for those who don't know how to cook healthy, how to make this plate. And I doubt half of us go out and fix our plates. Um, uh, half of it, vegetables, that's my first thing. Two hands, and then one palm, uh, one fist for the corner, which is your meat and your starch. Not two hands for the meat and the meat, okay? We tend to make meat our biggest um, item, but we wanna change that, vegetable. And I like to tell everybody this, how do you, how do you decide what to eat? So you want it to eat more things that don't have a mama, don't have a daddy, don't swim, don't jump, don't run, don't slither. You want the plant base. I'm gonna tell you all about that diet in a minute. So here we go back to this food label. In my diabetes classes, my Healthy Living Center classes, in my Healthy Living Center, we teach you about living, learning that label. You learn to learn how many calories, what percentage of is fat, cholesterol, carbs, if you're a diabetic, if you have high cholesterol, I teach you how to read that label and if you have high blood pressure I teach you how many uh, milligrams of sodium and how to look for it. So that label again is your price tag. It is your everything. Simple carbs. What is simple carbs? These are nice words, uh, words we try to figure out what do they mean. Um, do three pumps with that one. So I'm gonna put it all up at one time. All right, good job. Uh, simple carbs, uh, that's the stuff that just like it says, simple. Simple sugar, um, ice cream, um, processed food tend to be refined. Cookies, I like to say the things you all, we like to call taste good. <laughs> simple, that's right. 
So you want to avoid the simple things of life. You won't limit them. It's okay to have them every now and then, but simply leave them alone. Next. Now this is what you want. You want a complex person. Somebody gonna challenge you. You want some food that's complex. What does that mean? You want your whole grain. And I'll you say that word whole grain, that means that when you go shopping, everything is market. When you buy that package, you look for that colorful package. You look for these buzzwords. Even on the cereal, they got a nice grain up there, say whole grain. So you want that word whole on the, everything you look for. And you remember we had to have that day, at least I'm brought up in South Carolina, we had grits every day. The cats were tired of grits, the dogs were tired of grits, we were tired of grits, but we ate grits every day. So it was a grain. So, but we also know for some uh, Northern, they love oatmeal. So that's a great choice for what we're looking for because it's a whole oat and it's a plant, plant base. As well as you want your sweet potatoes. We love sweet potatoes, but we put butter, sugar, everything else on that sweet potato. Okay, but it's a healthy whole grain on, um, um, food item. Fruits, most of your fruits are where we should go, corn and rice. I'm big on brown rice, whole grain rice. Rice is, and they, there are more and more rices out there. You have your quinoa and your, um, those are your, what I usually teach you is a super um, grain. It's, it's the most powerful, it has all the nutrients. Because when I say the whole grain, it has not been refined to market because simple white rice has been processed it's sweeter, it takes less time to cook. And plus we often use that. But if you have the opportunity, order whole grain rice, whole grain products. Watch your fats. We have the whole fat, two pumps on that. Um, foods that are your fats we want to have is your monosaturated, polysaturated. Again, here's another opportunity we talk about uh, uh, to learn I uh, teach you how to learn which ones are your better fats. Uh, they have many, but you want to look for your monosaturated in terms of process, and you want to avoid anything, here we go, that saturated fat, anything that has your um, butter, animal. Lord, I don't know where that came from, but anyway, my mama watched her make those b biscuits with that big water, Lord, I stopped eating it as soon as I saw her make it. But they taste good. So, but you want to limit that because it's the butter that makes it taste good. Oh, I hear y'all saying that bread with butter, okay? I, and, and, and you know what? It does taste good, but I'm not saying you can't have it. I just, you can't get all those rolls y'all walking away from Golden Corral in your bag with. You know, you know Aunt Sue always got to get a bag to take how home she go. Examples of good oil, olive oil, mono, con con cannoli oil, next best, peanut oil, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh, and vegetable oil. Here we go, better choices. I'm not saying you can't have it, I just say um, limit it and make the better choices of your oils. Next, bad oils. That's your coconut oil. How often I meet people buying coconut oil all the time because it is marketed as good for you. But it is a higher saturated fat. So you, one you want to leave away, palm oil in your Lord and bacon grease. How many of you all, don't raise your hand, but in your mind raise your hand. <laughs> don't put your hands up at all. But you all like a little bit of that bacon grease in your good old collard greens and your good old cabbage. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. All those complications Dr. Newby talked about, this is what clogs it up. These things here. Whole grains, I already talked about it. Whole grains, whole grains, whole grains. Healthy, has all the B vitamins, is the one that gives you energy. So I always pack my sandwiches and my food with whole grain for whatever it, uh, it is to look for that nutritional value. And choose good uh, meats. Uh, you have your chicken and going with one pump. There you go, whole. Turkey, fish, uh, uh go back, two down, go back. Turkey, fish, lean chicken or beef, pork. 
So here we go, chicken not fried. We all know those pretty much. So um, salmon is up not there, but I will always like to add that in for my uh, fat content, a healthy fat, your uh, salmon in that sense. You have, but bad fat, I don't even have to mention it. What's some bad fats without even pulling its answers up? Pig feet, chipmunks, bacon, uh, all on bad meats and all the fat on there. But one of the things, um, I, even my class, yes, Tuesday, Thursday, whatever the class, I um, mean, it, it just trying to get us away from cooking our vegetables without that animal fat. Uh, it's hard. Go. There we go. Pig feet, number one, tail. No, they're not telling no diabetes educator that nice building you eating them pig feet. No. Hot dogs. How many of y'all like hot dogs? That's a bad one. Yeah, you like kitty? We just, just ate a whole bunch of it at such and such cookout and birthday party. Hamburgers, pork, or beef sausage, and bologna. If, it doesn't, if it's not an animal, don't eat it. There's no animal called hot dog. There's no animal called bologna. There's no animal called none of those. So, don't eat it. Don't eat it. Bologna, oh, my mother is 92. Trying to convince her of this menu, forget it. I've given up. I, I, you know, you know where you can work and know where you can. She had three slices of that bologna and just said, I'm going to eat it. Okay, go ahead, mama. You're all right. She's 92 and won't use a cane, so whatever. All right, next. Reduce salt. One of the things is typically uh, we have a traditional ordinary diet of sodium. We consume, consume 3,500 uh, milligrams of sodium, but it is recommended a 2,300, which is a teaspoon of sodium. And if you have any of those diseases we're talking about today, we only say you're supposed to get 1,500. So what I always advocate and adamant about everybody who's in my classes and any who come through my program, you read that label because it will tell you how much sodium in there. We even take time going through everything they've eaten and saying how much sodium because then you want to know why your legs swell and why you this and why you that. I'm going to give you your answer right there in that package. So reading that label and looking at the salt. Next. Is sea salt better than regular salt? There you go. See, you already been through my class. Salt is salt. Seasoned salt, bam salt, everybody salt, everybody got a name. Salt is salt. Does salt is salt. What it is though, um, through my recent um, program, um, they talked about the different kinds of salt. There are better quality salts. What it is to have more have a stronger affinity of it, much stronger. You don't use as much of it. So with that um, regular salt we buy at the grocery store, tends you have to, to get that sodium taste, you tend to use more of it. You know how you start shaking this salt. But if we buy a better soda salt, you don't use nearly as much. So that's kind of one of the, where the gray line, but salt is salt, okay? Because that's one of our big things, we love salt. Here's my labels and understanding food labels. And at the bottom of it, it tells you the breakdown of that label. One of the things is I teach them how to look at it because it, I always corporate is um, trying to make a profit. So if that package is pretty, you know you all pick out that package and decide by the packet. And a lot of times they'll say if it's fat free, and we would often say that has to be better. But once you learn how to read that label, you can identify for whatever problem you have, regardless of it being overweight, hypertension, high cholesterol, you are able to distinguish that from learning to read that label. Bologna, oh yeah, there you go, bologna. Yeah, because you all love to fry it up, put a little cheese on it, and a sandwich. You had that as a, what y'all have it as, a little lunch? Little lunch on there? Uh-huh, it ain't going to be, I didn't have a, a little bit, right? Isn't that what we say? Okay, so just for those who just had bologna, uh, a sandwich yesterday or last week, we want to tell you if you have high blood pressure, your sodium content for one slice is um, 
This one is 400, for almost, let's go with 500, because I know y'all had two slices, because y'all did not have that thin one slice. You know good and well you did not have that two, one slice. Everybody put two. So you added 800, half a teaspoon of salt. Mm-hmm, there you go. That's why your legs swelling. That's why you got more visits. That's why, that's why, that simple baloney. Okay? All right, what up? Hot dogs. I love hot dogs. You're going to get two of them at the cookout. All right? So I even put y'all name brand. Y'all like name brand. Who is that? Oscar Mom. Oh, that's some, and it's a beef dog. Beef dog. Okay. So that one is 740 for one little hot dog. Yeah, yes, you got my point? Come to my classes, Healthy Living Center. We talk all about what you're eating. Actually, how that's one hot dog to 700 milligrams of sodium and more or less that fat content, why we trying not to be overweight, why we trying to lose uh, these calories, is the fat content and what is it? It's a, um, you buy, I don't know where the animal hot dog, hot dog come from. What's one of them animals walking, crawling and slithering, something, right? I have no idea, but it's, it didn't grow out of the ground, so that's my point, going to the next one. This is what I talk about, the diet for diabetes health, but forget that leading counter, diabetes health, it is the diet for healthy living. Healthy living, plant-based and Mediterranean diet. Those are the two times what we want to look at. Let's go. Uh, we got two pictures up there. Statistics and evidence base have shown that uh, the Mediterranean and the plant base have shown improvement and reverse certain cancers because again, it talks about and promote more and healthy eating. And the plant base, just as it is, it talks about eating more plant because we know those are the things that have less fat contents and it's not processed. And my time is moving, so plant-based is where we really promote again. And next, your diet goals is to eat more and less meat, more vegetables. And Dr. Newby we're going to get finish up with the contents of what we do to make your health good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just have a few quick... Uh Wisdom and knowledge equal good health. Next. Next. Okay, one Bible quote comes from Proverbs 4 to 7. It says, Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. And Proverbs 7, 5, I mean 1 5 says, Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance. And there's one other quote from Thomas Edison back in. 1800 says the doctor of the future will give no medicine but will involve the patient in proper use of food, fresh air, and exercise. It's amazing how we're coming right back around to that now. So in conclusions, a diabetes has become a menace to society, especially to the black and Hispanic community. Uh, diabetes causes and contributes to many other medical conditions. The 21st century solution the ultimate control and prevention of diabetes is a healthy lifestyle and plant-based dietary habits. And as in the Wizard of Oz, your ruby slippers are your plant-based diet and healthy lifestyle. I just want to let you know our Health and Living Center Foundation uh, sponsored this talk. Uh, and we uh, actually have classes and community and programs that as we mentioned. We have written a book called I Have Diabetes, Now What? And any of you actually interested, I have a few copies, only $10. And we have time for questions now. Is there a way you can calculate your A1C without going to get the blood test? Theoretically it is, but you would have to test your sugar several times every day for three months. And there's a formula that sort of matches that, but this is very difficult. Hello, Ms. Olivia, um, I just have a question about your uh, your program. Is it just for diabetics? Because I have a young lady that I work with um, trying to get her to manage her 
her weight, she currently like 270 pounds, and the insurance company, I asked for a nutritional consult for her, and they won't pay it because they said she's not a diabetic. So I'm looking for some type of, you know, some a program or something in the community that I can help her get the resources that she needs um, to help her better her, her lifestyle. Perfect question. Um, actually, that is why we came to advocate um, for um, the Healthy Living Center because if there's so many questions, so many people, uh, we just lack that understanding and marketing has just given us a false sense of um, how to manage the business. And my administrator, she has all the programs. I actually just I had my first class that was open to the public to come in and I show you how to cook. Um, how to cook without all, with herbs, which we may not be accustomed to, you use butter and fat and all those things to season. I teach you how to use your herbs, your basil, your rosemary, thyme, and things that you grow. How do you take your celery and to make it pop? How do you make the food you have in your house pop with season? Because uh, Thursday's class, we took, we cooked cabbage, and all of them cooked cabbage with animal food. And I teach you, and that you taste how you can make it pop and taste snap good. <laughs> My administrator right here, she can tell you all the programs, the program off, and I'm not going to miss my plug of Sorry Brother Keith, uh, <laughs> uh, my um, health fair, which we will have a chef come in, we, Dr. Mibi Hot, and my brother-in-law. We will be talking about specifically diet, healthy eating, and all of this. And Ms. Uh, Eva, my administrator, have the flyer from that, and we, again, will show you the healthy living center. So, yes. Uh, yes, I have... Uh... I have a uh, diabetic and uh, arthritis neuropathy in my hip and in my leg and my thigh, and it has caused damage to the to the muscle and to the uh, nerve of the side. It makes me hard. It's hard to walk on. But this, but it's, it's seems like it's poor circulation in his leg. It just stays stiff all the time. I get up, in, especially when I get up in the morning. Uh, you know, once I get going. I can keep, I, you know, I keep going, but it, uh, it just stays stiff. And, and when I get up out of the bed in the morning, that's when I thought it should be better. But also, the doctor told me that there's nothing they can do for it, and that it'll take, uh, and it, it'll heal itself in about a year. Yeah. So, so what was your question? Yeah, well, I was, or was just like more of a comment? Yeah, no, I, was, I, was, I wanted to know about the, uh, about the healing. Okay. Well, I'll, uh, I'll talk to him about it, uh, just so we can keep moving out. You and I have that conversation. Um, with regards to the medical and the clinical aspect, we, do, are you participating in anything like exercise, the chair exercises? Yes, yes. Those are, can be positive roles to promote um, healing as well as the weight loss on the hip and the exercise. In our Healthy Living Center, we do chair exercise. I run a diabetes prevention program sponsored by the CDC, which I am a CDC lifestyle coach. And we promote and patients have real, literally lost weight and do those chair exercises. And we will have those um, exercises and people next week to even further garner your Okay, next question. Good afternoon, Dr. and Dr. Snoopy. Uh, I have a comment and then a question as far as medical relationship happens to be concerned. But Dr. Nubi, you stated that your mother was 92, correct? Maybe, do you think it would be helpful if you could put something together to show how she actually got to 92? Have for one more question. Good afternoon, Dr. Newbies. 
question for you. Uh, once uh, diabetes is uh, developed, uh, is it reversible or at best it's manageable? Uh, that's always a difficult question because it can be reversed. Uh, a lot of it depends on if it's related to weight. A lot of times it will be reversed if you can get down to a certain weight where your body is back in balance and your A1C drops below five and you just have to say, well, the diabetes is gone. There's some uh, gastric bypass surgery that seems to have cured uh, diabetes for one reason or another. Um, most, though, I don't tell people don't trust, don't be so bent on getting rid of it. If you can control it to the point that you don't even need medicine and everything is eating and exercising and things of that nature, um, that's, 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 that's pretty good. Too many things you just can't change in our lifestyle after so many years that can really end itself to getting rid of it 100 percent All right, well thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Can you give everybody a round of applause for that excellent discussion? Thank you very much. I will have the flyers for our health fair outside, so I won't delay it, and we will welcome you. Get a chance to see my great brother-in-law speak again as well. But we're going to talk more about that evening. Okay. Thank you very much.